Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening, CPO Obonyo. Yes, thank you. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well, and I think you can hear me too. Okay, thank you, I can hear you. So, dear students who are currently attending this class, confirm in the chat box where you can get, uh, whether you can get our voice. And we are very sorry for this today. We are almost 30 minutes today because of different issues, but we will try to catch up on the remaining time. Uh, so this is revision class uh, for auditing. And I think you are all going to Start for auditing. No one misplaced. So it is actually I want for auditing CPA. And this session will be moderated by CPO Bonyo. So presentation will be done by himself. Uh, mine is just to welcome him and welcome you on behalf of ECPA. Just before I give mic to Obonyo. I'm Felicia Vazineza, principal examiner at ECPA. So we all expect you to, to have attention in this session so that by the end, you will be at the level of uh, testing exams. You know, we are remaining with like two weeks toward November examination. So pay attention in this session. And the Obonyo will try to take you through uh, different tips as far as uh, all the examination is concerned. So Obonyo, you are most welcome. And also I want to, re to inform you that there are so many questions uh, asked by students. So you can try to go through in the key and the uh, chat box and read those questions. Probably most of them we find that is among our presentation. So if you find that you didn't tackle in your presentation, you need to answer it separately. But if you find that those questions are among what you're going to present, so you can wait until you reach them. But if you find it is not among, you can answer it separately. Obonyo, you're most welcome. Uh, Mike and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Felicine, for giving me this opportunity. Um, welcome. We, we are very sorry due to technical issues. We got late, but hope we are going to do something. Um, welcome students. Yeah, you have like a uh, few weeks, one, one or two weeks to do your exams. So what we are trying to do is to go through techniques of handling this paper, uh, audit and assurance. So I would uh, like you to get into inbox. If you have any question, I will address those questions after. Uh, particularly by now, I expect that uh, at your respective maybe training center or private reading, you have adequately covered 80% uh, or 90% of the syllabus or almost 100%. You have mastered the course outline. So what I'm going to do is like refreshing you how to tackle questions in an exam. Yeah, particularly, I would uh, sample a paper. Um, first, you have to, uh, uh, by now you have, uh, you are acquainted with, uh, with the structure of the paper that you are going to do. Now, I want to sample a paper from, Uh, 
April 2022. Uh, you need to know how your paper looks like. Like in this paper of April 2022, I was doing just mapping to see the areas that were set. And I saw that those are the areas, the trend that uh, the examiner tend, critical areas that the examiner tend to cover. Uh, like in this paper, we are going to look at this paper. There is question one. Uh, as you know, you would find that the first three questions are compulsory, and you have to make a choice from the other ones. So let me go through the paper. Um, I'm going to share the paper shortly. I'm going to share the paper. Uh, my objective is at the end, do you know how exam methodology, how to answer questions in a given paper? Now, for example, this is the paper for, uh, you have first to read instruction. You have three hours, 15 minutes. Those are the, the usual instructions. But instructions are important because it will give you how many questions you answer. So you have question A, section A and B. Section A asks three compulsory questions, while B, you have to choose two from the three. So in total, you have to do five questions. So, uh, these five questions carry 100 marks. Now, particularly, let me focus on these compulsory questions. Now, these are now compulsory question. Each question is carrying 20 marks. So, like this is a case study. All your questions are case study. So in this case, we have a question. I would like us to go very quickly through the question. Yeah, particularly I would uh, encourage you for this case study question. You have an overview of the question. You go through the question first, then you read the question because it is it would help you to first internalize. As you are reading the case study, you are able to mark key points that the examiner require. Like here, draft management letter addressed to the board of directors commenting on weakness you have discovered risk arising from the weakness and your recommendation for improvements. So as you see, this is application question. You are going to use the case study. So 
uh, reading the question first would give you an upper, uh, would give you earlier a hint. What are the issues you are going to underline? What are the weaknesses you are going to underline? Comment on any significant impact these matters may have on your year-end work. Describe for limitation facing auditors in undertaking work, their work. So you'll know that, for example, C, C would not be like using the case study. So when also you are looking at uh, a scenario question like this, you should know which are the questions that are uh, scenario based. Now, if I've done this, I will go back and start reading my case study. Bearing in mind that question A requires me to identify to identify weaknesses, give, uh, give the risk and give the recommendation. So I would read through here while I'm identifying major areas of weakness. For example, here, you are the senior auditor of Masoro Computer, a distributor of computers, and have just completed the interim audit for six months, ended 30th June 2021. When you and your team members were auditing the accounting records, system and controls, you recorded in your audit files the following information. So in this case, the credit limit for four customers of Masoro Computer Limited had been substantially exceeded and a new customer in the last 12 months had not been allocated credit limits. So when I read here, I will know that which uh, among the controls, we have controls, internal controls over different areas. We have purchases, we have sales. Now, when we are talking about customers, we are talking about controls, activities over sales. Now, among the sales, we have faces like ordering, uh, credit approval, dispatch of goods, and recording of goods. So in this case, one of the condition is that credit limits, that before you approve, uh, before you approve selling goods to a customer, you should have to check the credit limits. So here, there is one I can identify, there is one issue here. Masoro Computer Limited had been, the credit limits had been substantially exceeded. Now, as I'm reading this, I will mark this one as one of the, my weakness. As I'm reading, because I, I read the question, I'm now trying to underline uh, a sketch, an overview of what is going to give me, what is going to form my answers. Yeah, number one, I've noted one issue that that is a weakness, but I'm going to, at the reading stage, you are just highlighting points you have not given a structure. You just highlight key, keywords that may point out the weakness of a client. So Roman two, when testing a sample of 15 purchase invoices, you noted that one purchase invoice had been posted 
twice to the purchase ledger by mistake and two other purchase invoice could not be traced. So uh, as you know, when, once you are doing this question, because it is testing on weakness, you have to focus on components of a good ICS. A good ICS should have those five components, uh, control environment, control procedures, risk assessments. You should also look at monitoring and accounting information system. So if you look at control, uh, control procedures or control activities, uh, has some subclassification called there is segregation, there should be segregation, arithmetic accuracy, uh, supervision, more, um, uh, talk of uh, talk of internal audit, uh, supervision, uh, surprise checks, all those. If you look at those, this posted twice, it shows that there is a problem. There's a weakness here in the recording. And also here, there are two other purchase invoice that could not be traced. This points a weakness in the control, in the ICS internal control system of the client. Then I read number three, the result of a stock check conducted by AF here revealed that some computer that were supposed to be in stock were missing and other computer had not been returned, had been returned by customers, were in stock but had not been recorded. So the recording is an issue here. A few missing computers have been traced to directors and staff who have borrowed them for personal use at home. Okay. So number four, leasing agreement for computer offered by Masoro Computer Limited to its customers have been queried by RRA, which is not certified that the terms of the agreements, which give the customer the right to purchase the equipment at future dates, qualify them as leases as opposed to higher purchase agreements. These agreements have been in use for a number of years and were developed by your firm. So there is agreement for computers offered by Masoro Com Computer Limited to its customers have been queried by RRA which is not certified that the terms of the agreements which give customer right to purchase the equipment at future dates, qualify them as leases as opposed to higher purchase. These agreements have been in use for a number of years and were developed by your firm. So, uh, First, if you read a, a case like this, you find that the point is not coming out clear. Try to look at first those points which are very clear. Uh, to save time, the, uh, the, the fourth aspect become the last one, the one which takes time to interpret. For example, like the fourth, 
it could be with the recognition method, but we need to, we have to go back to that. Now, another thing, when you are looking at the question, look at the marks, the marks and how the question is addressed. So for example, this, this question has 12 marks. It doesn't mean that you are giving uh, 12 points. No. If you look at this, it is the question is framed into three. The question is framed into three parts. Now, the first part is identifying weakness. So how you are going to structure your answer. The first part as a weakness. The second part The first part as a weakness. The second part as the risk. The risk, or we call it implication. Implication of the weakness. The third part, the third part as recommendation. This recommendation to approve the weakness. So if this question asks these three parts, it, it would give you that, you are out of the 12 marks. If you divide by th these three parts, you are expected to give at least four, four points. You are going to give four points if it has three parts and there are 12 marks these three parts, it means for each point you are giving, you are going to divide it into three parts. And meaning you are going to give four, uh, four points, each point highlighting weakness, risk, and recommendation. That is how you are going to structure your 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 questions so uh, another thing a draft of management letter when it's a draft you are going to write uh it's this is a firm of a CPA it's called, you are going to write it like a letter. It's going to be a format of a formal letter. Now this formal letter, it should be addressed, addressing Masoro Computer Limited. So, uh, by now, you should know how official letters are addressed, but just a matter of format. You identify your auditing firm and two. Uh, in this case, in this question, it did not uh, address the, it did not mention the name of auditing firm, but it is it's addressing the name of the clients. So let me, for example, uh, let 
let me, for example, give a format of that, how you would address a letter. I think you have seen my my word doc my my word documents. Uh, here, if the the name of the firm has not been uh, stated, if you can write even your name. Uh, just because it's a draft, eh? yeah, I'm using this to give a draft. Eh? Assuming that's your auditing firm. So this subject, you are not using it for only passing exams. You are also doing it for practice. In future, in few, you'll be practitioner or you'll be audit managers, you or senior auditors, you'll be drafting letters, uh, management letters. So, uh, you give your address yeah to this is the name of this farm is Masoro Computers Masoro Computers Limited. Masoro Computers Limited. Bio box like this. Okay. Now that's the like a draft. Then in this draft, you have you must have the title. So draft here. So the question was asking you to draft management. Some it's it can be called management letter or letter of weakness. So the question has specifically used management letter. Yeah, management letter like this. Now, a management letter, you should give a introduction of that letter, what you are going to do. So in management letter, you don't say I, you say we, because auditing, you do it as a team. So we particularly say we, we have here you'll give a brief introduction showing that you have uh, you have examined the books and identified weaknesses yeah so here you may start like this uh, during our audit review, 
during our audit review. Um, we examined or we say we identified we identified deficiencies, we identified deficiencies in your accounting and control system system so uh, you'll say below okay we have also or you can say given below we have indicated we have indicated those divisions we have indicated those deficiencies 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 are weaknesses eh? we have indicated those deficiencies their implication or their risk the risk of the deficiency risk of deficiency and recommendations recommendation to address to address their weaknesses. So this is what we mean as a draft. Then in below, you can there are, there are two approaches you can decide to use paragraph form whereby you you do each point and then you identify there there are different ways of answering this structuring this question you may decide to answer weaknesses the recommendations separately and okay the implications or risks and their recommendations in different paragraphs or you try to answer each point you identify each weakness and whatever and also there is this approach of tabula yeah in practice the tapira form is being adopted and more more yeah and more uh, more presentable you identify an issue let's say you identify a risk You, you identify a risk, you identify, sorry, you identify area weakness first. Let me talk about weakness. 
then you talk about uh, risk, or we talk about another word which may be used is implication. Then you talk about recommendation. Now, uh, in this case, for example, we had uh, the first thing we saw there in that case, in the first question, we saw a case whereby the Masoro Limited had exceeded the credit limit. So here, you may identify the points. You say credit limit. Credit limit was the issue in that question. Here, yeah. then it's good to identify first the main issue. Then it even looks your work organized and it doesn't make the, the person who is your ma marking your work to look untied. Now, when Marking is done sometimes you find a student is disorganized. Is you can't identify the points clearly. So if I write like this credit limits, I talk about that credit limit. For example, I talk about, let's say, uh, here, I will say during our review, during our our audit review during our audit review we noted that or we observed those are the words you use in your draft we noted that masoro Computers Limited, Computers Limited, Masoro Computers Limited exceeded exceeded the credit, the credit limit substantially now uh, i told you that this question was testing on the credit limits when i was going through the case study identify that that is area on sales now here you have to give the implication what happens if you exceed the credit limits? Meaning you'll give more people goods on credit. If you give more goods on credit, there are likely to be default or bad debts if the credits are not controlled. So, uh, if you exceed beyond the credit limit, that's one of it. Now, here you have to give the implication. Uh, implication here, you say, if the credit limit, if the credit limit is exceeded, if 
you say Masoro Limited. Masoro Limited is likely, is likely to have more bad debts, more bad debts. So in this case, if you have identified the implication, then it's easier to give the recommendation. Once you have identified the weakness, it's very easy to give a recommendation. So uh, here, the recommendation is very easy. You would say that maybe Masoro Limited, Masoro Limited should strictly should strictly yeah this one there are many languages you can use so long as you have known the problem the problem here should strictly observe all should give credit should give you'll say give advance those are the the terms you'll be using should advance or uh, grant those are the words you should be using should grant a credit should grant credit based on credit worthiness, worthiness of customers, credit worthiness of customers, or another person can write, yeah, that's the, the first suggestion. Uh, another suggestion you can give in your recommendation, yeah, Masoro Limited should observe. Should observe the credit The credit ceiling, ceiling is the limit. The credit ceiling or limit to its customers. It is customers to uh, to prevent chances or to re to minimize chances of bad debts. So I find giving recommendation would be much easier because you are giving a recommendation. The challenge here is to identify a weakness. So for this, uh, this one, You'll be awarded one mark here, one mark here for each point that you identify. Now, uh, for the second part, we saw that there were missing invoices for purchases. So there were missing, missing invoices. At least make for these questions of explaining, 
at least try to make your work. Somebody identify the main issue you are discussing. So there are people who write in uh, paragraphs and it becomes very difficult to identify the, the points. So if you look here, even the person who is marking this work would find it easier to award marks. Even if I was answering in a paragraph, if I write a credit limit, somebody would know that I'm addressing a problem of credit limit. If I write credit limit A, then I write first paragraph, uh, I write maybe weakness, second implication, the third recommendation. Whichever format you should make your work to be more, more, more feasible. Here, for example, missing invoice. Uh, here, uh, during our audit review, our audit review, we noted that or we observed that. Yeah, we noted that. Yeah, purchase invoices. Purchase invoices. One. There were two issues there. Uh, if we go back to that. If I go back to that presentation a bit. If I go back to that presentation here, there were issue here, the 15 invoices were tested. Uh, the credit limit has been addressed. You noted that one purchase invoice had been posted twice uh, in the purchase ledger by mistake, and two other purchase invoice could not be traced. Those are the, that's what I was talking about. And this is another issue of posting twice. So these are two issues. You can address them separately or you can talk about uh you can talk about patches if you like but i think those are the two issues that can be can be dealt separately so let me go back to my answer sheets so yeah, we noted that the purchase invoices were that there was the issue was uh two the two purchases invoice could not be traced. So we noted that two purchase invoice could not be traced. So from accounting, you know the, the problem here, if the purchases are understated, Definitely, you know, the cost of sales would be understa understated. Here, this is the implication you would talk about here. The, the cost of sales, the cost of sales 
will be understated will be would be understated will be understated due to missing invoices then the recommendation uh, here the recommendation you should come up with a recommendation that ensure that files are missing not missing or invoices should not be missing so uh, I would here I would suggest a recommendation that the the invoice the invoice should be serialized or numbered and properly filed. And properly filed. So this one would tell that I've tried to address that problem. So I would go to the third issue whereby Miss uh, there was duplication errors. So if you go through the, the question, it was like the invoice, one purchase invoice was posted twice. So you explain the issue. Yeah, during our review or our examination, we discovered that we discovered that one purchase invoice, one purchase. invoice was entered twice was entered was entered twice so you know the problem of entering yeah even here if you say the cost of sales will be understated you talk even profit, the effect it has on profit. So even here, the best, the another person, if the cost of sale will be understated, it means profit would be overstated. The, you have to talk about la, like the missing invoice. You may say if, if, cost of sale would be understated, then it means net profit will be over, will be overstated. Would be overstated. So here, duplication errors during our examination, we discovered that one of the invoice was entered twice. The cost of sales were more, meaning if there will be more, the profits would be understated if you have uh, if you have more 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 in invoice entered twice the cost of sale would be high and the the net profit would be the net profits would be understated so the, the risk here, we are talking about the risk of misstatements in the books. So then 
the other parts, you will talk about uh, how would you address those duplication a er duplication errors uh, was purchased twice. It was in the purchase ledger. So in this case, you will talk about um, you'll give a recommendation of uh, arithmetic accuracy. You you propose maybe Masoro. Masoro Computers, Masoro Computers Limited. Should have an, an ICS or internal control system, or should have a strong in yeah. that ensure transactions are not duplicated. Yeah, meaning there are some systems when you enter uh, uh, an invoice twice, it will tell you that this the invoice is already entered in the system. So meaning this, uh, the, the, the control system here, the accounting information. Here, you can talk about ICS or accounting accounting system. Sorry, accounting accounting system that ensure that transactions are not entered twice. Now there's also another, the third part. Uh, the third part was this stock taking that was conducted, they were missing inventory. So the third case here, I would say there is missing missing inventory. Then you give the details about the missing inventory. You say, yeah, during give the 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 facts in the case uh, during our audit audit we noted that uh, inventories. Inventories were missing, and others were used because we are told they were used by directors, and others were used for. For personal use. So here you understand when the impact that you are likely to experience if there is missing inventories So in this case, we could say that 
uh, there is a risk. There is a risk of misstatement. Misstatement of inventory. This is statement of profits of net net profits mm -hmm. then uh, also another implication Uh, it's the inventory, the inventory of Masoro is prone or is exposed to, whenever I'm saying prone, is prone to embezzlement or theft, is prone to Theft because there are no effective controls. So so in this case, uh, you understand this one, you have to, stock has various levels. Here, how do you, how do you address the issue of missing inventories? You may talk about, uh, you may talk about, let's say having fiscal controls. Masoro Limited Masoro Limited should have in place, should have in place. Uh, fiscal controls, fiscal controls, fiscal controls over inventory. Mm -hmm. So you should also talk about, because inventory has got so many control, uh, fiscal controls and other controls over inventory. Then uh, also there is a, okay, what now I'm emphasizing that question. There are, uh, there are so many points, there are points you can give there. So you had to give. So what I was emphasizing is, this question is very common, management letter, and you have number one, uh, look at the marks given, know how to structure your answer. And also when you are writing management letter, let it sign, let it sound, like a management letter, not just writing plain points. Here, somebody who reads this, you will identify that this is like audit. This is you are doing audit. So identify your point clearly and also mark the language which you use when you are writing drafts, the, the official letters or drafts. Now, 
uh, for part A, I would uh, I was emphasizing that because it's one of the major areas you can give the four points. Now, part B comment on any significant impact this matter would have on your year end work. So, particularly, uh, what we call year end. Yeah, you have to check on uh, how would this matter influence your reporting. Because year end work, it means you are doing audit, audit reporting. So when you are doing your audit reportings, uh, this question is testing you the how to give opinion so in that case there are so there are four matters given here any significant comment on any significant impact this matter may have on your end audit work so uh, this one comes to reporting. And when it comes to reporting, you it does this question has not specified which matter exactly, but it's general. Like number one, we saw the issue of credit limits, which we, we saw the issue of uh, misstatements. Mostly, they are issue of uncorrected misstatements. So in that case, you may approach that question in uh, various uh, various ways. Uh, one, you may approach that question if, you know, when there are misstatements, they are supposed to be corrected. Corrected. So you would uh, request management to give adjustments for those misstatements. Now, if management do not make the misstatements, usually we have two opinions because year end, it refers to the opinion. So in that case, uh, what the question is testing, year end is usually opinion. So, their possibility first of since we know that we have two types of opinion we have unqualified opinion and we have instance of qualified opinion. So, because the issue above has not uh, specified the issue to be addressed, in this case, you would uh, take that perspective and
you would take that perspective and say uh you there when you are giving opinion there are matters that you look at if those items are material uh, assuming they are material because there's no, nowhere it's mentioned but the issue is if if adjustments if managements make adjustments unqualified unqualified opinion would be issued so in this case if Okay, those are the possible how the those work may affect your reporting if management do not do not affect affect the adjustments and the, the adjustments and the uncorrected and the uncorrected errors are material a qualified a qualified opinion would be issued so yeah, that one was just testing you, like year end. What do you understand about the about the year end? So, let me go back to the question again. The question Yeah, let me So like part C, describe four limitations facing auditors undertaking their work. Now, a question like this, it is a general question. Yes, you may, somebody raise the, the question, the, somebody raise the hand. You can type the question, please, if 
you have any concern? Okay, describe four limitation facing auditors in undertaking their work. Now, uh, this question is not testing the case study. This question is a general question, like what are the limitation of auditing? So as we understand, uh, this is now the question testing the basic. What are the inherent, we, we understand from the first topic, call it as inherent limitations. One, uh, there are some, uh, Number one, you talk about time, time or costs as a limitation. Sometimes auditors do not have enough time or the, yeah, that's the first case. Number two, you talk about the elements of uh, judgment. Yeah, there are cases where auditor need to use judgments. Uh, audit is not a pure exercise. Audit is based on judgments. Uh, evidence. Those are, I'm referring inherent limitation of audit. E evidence is more persuasive than conclusive. Now, like in case of uh, in case of estimates provisions, let's say provision for depreciation, sometimes management use estimates. So in that case, the evidence obtained from that case is persuasive rather than conclusive. So. In this case, you have you are supposed to give all the all this all limitation of an audit. So this one at introduction of an audit, uh, this one was out of the scenario scenario question. Uh, then. Another, there are more, more points you can give to this. So there is a, somebody who asked me the question, is the management letter ends like that? Now, the management letter, you can end letter, you can end here. Uh, somebody who asked me, this letter can end by, I'm going a bit back before, before I continue. This letter here, it can be half a place for signing. Yeah, it can be have a place for, for signing or maybe somebody management to sign. Management, maybe a person in management, you write maybe management date signature. Then it ends like that. So uh, that is the response to that. At least you should have a place for somebody to sign because this is addressed to the management. Then uh, there's also another format for management letter whereby they have to give their comments in, in practice. But because now you are told to draft, 
there are some there are some other formats for a conclusive management letter. So there, there is where management give their comments and who is responsible, the person who is responsible for that. So this one could not be a complete, but what you are being tested are these three parts, but they are ideally, the actual letter should have where management comment, comment the issues you have raised. Maybe they would say addressed and then you may indicate the person who, who is going to address this problem. I think I've answered that. Then there is something I'm seeing, Smaya. I'm sure I've answered your question. Is the management ends like that? Um, Smaya has said lack of information limited to client files. That's another uh, another oops, observation she has given. So yeah, challenge of accessing information, the limitation. Yeah, but uh, yes, much as auditor has a right, a right to, to to access the information, there could be some information which is concealed. We call it concealed information. Or, or auditor may not be able to identify errors or frauds due to concealed information. So it could be another limitation as the point given by Smire. Uh, then let me uh, look at what is question two testing. Question two, it is testing ISA 315 revised. Obtaining an understanding of entity and its environment and assessing the risk of material misstatements provide guidance on this matter. The concern is that auditor must have a thorough understanding of main aspect of the client's business and environment in order to be able to assess the risk, decide audit strategy, and be able to design and perform effective audit procedure. So uh, this question is testing the planning aspect. It's a 300. But part of the e e audit planning, we have what we call when what, there are main aspects you do during planning. Planning involves uh, assessing, assessing risk. Uh, that's where you do materiality. You, you set the materiality. At uh, the planning, that's what you, you, you set the approach. You do analytical procedures. So, but particularly, this is the aspect of planning called uh, obtaining understanding of the entity and the, its environment and assessing risk of material. So the question is asking, particularly in accordance to ISA 315, explain the five main aspects of the client's business and environments which the auditor should understand. So these aspects are, for example, these issues concerning the standards, they give us very specific aspects. 
So these are the main aspects. Part P, you have to read the whole question before you answer, because you may find you are answering A, you are giving point of A instead, point of A in A, which are supposed to be in B. Explain for procedure auditor can use to gain understanding of clients, business, and environment. Differentiate inherent control and detection risk. So uh, now this one is testing which are the areas, the clients, which are the areas that one need to understand the client's business. So I would like to test you to give me, because this is a specific area, these answers are very specific about the ESAs. So I would like uh, in one minute, to type in, because you are supposed, if you are given explain five, you are supposed first to name and explanation is easier once you have named. I want you to inbox the main aspects of the, the areas that you need to understand about the business and its environment. I want to see your inbox to see whether you understand that ISA. Because those are the ISAs that you need to understand before you go to exam. ISA 300, planning. Uh, ISA, the one of the, the reporting and evidence. Those are the critical ESAs that you should know the exact contents. ESA 300, ESA 700, ESA 500. So uh, I want somebody to, to write something in the inbox, question and answer. Okay, that question you can even you you can even guess. Who can guess what aspect do you need to understand about the client's business and environment? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. I've given you two two minutes to type. You can even go to your book and you tell me where are you going to open, which topic is that? And then you give me the specific issues or you can guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen one person as, uh -huh. this one person was written, another item, please write something, suppose you are guessing, which are items that you need to understand yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, somebody has given, uh, if you look at the inbox, somebody has, number one, this one you are looking at two aspects. You are looking at even the way the, the question is split. You are looking at business, client business, and the enver environment. Now, somebody has given the correct answer, the nature of the entity. That's one point. Accounting policies. You need to understand the, the, the nature of the entity. Accounting policies, which are applicable in the entity. Uh -huh. Another thing, Yeah, somebody has given another answer, internal control, correct? You need to understand internal controls of an entity. Another one. Now, for example, if think of what perspective, if we are auditing like a bank, what do you need to understand about environment? Because all of these points you have given, you are focusing, you are focusing on one aspect. You are focusing on clients' business. What about environment? Which environment do you focus? Uh -huh. Write a point. Which environment do you focus? So, uh, let me read more points. Yeah, industry of which the client is operating, correct. This person has given the answer which I wanted, Tony. The industry of which the client operating is the environment. If you are auditing a bank, you need to understand the banking industry. If you are auditing, uh, let's say it is MTN, you have to understand telecommunication industry. What are the trends? Uh, you also need to understand uh, industry legal environment. Uh, concerning Concerning the entity also, you need to understand about the objectives. Objectives and strategies that are related to the business risk. I think that one most of you would have, would have answered this question very well. Now, this ISA tends to address, ISA 315 tends to address the the why, what, and how. Uh, how to understand an entity in its environment. What it does, the, what it does, or what is the client's business and its environment. Then another aspect, how, how to understand. This question you can even guess at this point. How do you understand the entity and its environment? If let's say you are auditing a company for the first time, how would you understand it is? Yeah, Sylvia has given policies and procedures. I see more answers measurements and review of the entities, laws and regression, both of you have given good answers for that. Now let's look at B, how to gain. Number one, we have looked at what, because the ISA 315 looks at the three aspects, 
of entity and its environment. And I think that one is being emphasized to under if you do not, why is it necessary to, it's very necessary to obtain an understanding of the entity. If you fail that, you will not be able to assess risk. You will not able to design and perform further audit procedures. And you would not set what we call ma proper materiality. So it tends to address, when, once you are reading that ISA, ISA 315, I've seen it's a point of focus in the current audit or by, by international standards. ISA 315, it addressed three things. Number one, why? It addressed three issue. Why do you need to understand? I'm going to number two, I'll, I'll, I'm addressing number two, why you need to understand the entity and its environment. That is the first aspect. If a person asks you, why do you need to understand? It's to identify because you want number one, because this question can be tested next time in another way. That's why I'm giving you the three, three aspects. You need to understand why, what, what you need to understand, why, what, and how. Those are the three aspects. Those are the three aspects you need to answer in ISA 315. Now, if you say why, why you answer the, the three to identify and assess risk, to identify, to identify and assess risk. That's why. Then number two, the reason why you need to understand is to design and perform. Is to able to design. I think you are seeing what I'm writing. to design and perform. That's my, my comment commentary on that. Then number three, exercise provide a frame of reference for exercising audit judgments. Providing Reference for exercising audit judgment. So that is why we do, we understand the clients. And then the second aspect is what tested in B. How? How do you need to identify the entity? Uh, in that case, how it means, which are the techniques, procedure, the auditor need to understand the entity. He can use analytical procedures.
Now, I want somebody to type on the inbox to tell me what are analytical procedures as I'm giving more. Uh -huh. You can, if you need to understand the clients, you can use observation. If you need to understand the clients, you can use cryo. You can use prior audit knowledge. You can use uh, you can use yeah so main items observation. You can use inspection. Um, discussion by the audit team. Of the uh, the susceptibility of the financial statements. This is financial statements. You can information. So those answers are more specific according to that ISA. So I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to note the ISA that you are going to focus that are being tested and you are required to give the specific answers. So ISA, that is information from other engagements. Maybe if you have other engagements, because you may have other engagements, because an auditing firm might have offered other other engagements to the clients and may have knowledge about that clients. So that is the aspect of how we have understood uh, we have answered why uh, we have answered how, how to understand and what, what we have answered in Roman one above. What do you know, need to understand? We have said industry, we have said so many items. Uh, we have said so many items in Roman one. So uh, there's a question I asked, what are analytical procedures? I wanted to see understanding on that. Analytical procedures. Let me see your question and answer. Suppose you are explaining these points. You are giving more details. Observation, what do you observe? Suppose you are explaining observation in audit. What do you use? Where do you use observation as an audit procedure? Where do you use analytical procedures? How will analytical procedures help you? So whenever we are using uh, analytical procedures, I see nobody has written, we are doing what we call, 
we are comparing the financial data with financial data of maybe other periods or same period or prior periods to check whether there is any significant variation. Variation, we mean difference. Now, it's just comparison of information to see whether the information conform or meet expected expected pattern. For example, you can, if you need to understand the, the business, you can use ratio. When we do ratio analysis, you are using analytical procedures. Observation, you observe procedures. If it is, let's say, stock, stock counting procedures, you can observe. You can observe inventory movements. Those are, you can, so you observe procedures. Prior audit knowledge, those are experience of the audit. Now, uh, C, differentiate inherent control and detection risk. Yeah, this question is more direct from the book. It's about risk assessment. So you are supposed to know uh, the divination. Apart from divination, you are supposed to know how to assess because you can be given even a case study to identify inherent factors of inherent risk and factors of control or detection risks. So uh, can, uh, at this point, this one we call it, yeah, components, yeah, they, they form what we call audit risk model. Now, I want, uh, I want to see, because these are the basics that you have to know under risk assessment. I want somebody to write to me whether you understand any of this risk. I want to see the, the, somebody writing in the question answer. What is inherent risk? What is control risk? What's the detection risk? Because those are direct, direct areas from the book. Would you write that? Um, waiting to see how you give, you understand uh, what is inherent risk, what is detection risk. In one minute, somebody to give, you can write in question and answer how you understand the inherent risk, control and detection risk. Anybody who has the divination? Yeah, I've seen one person as. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see the answers given. 
yeah, one has written control risk is the risk happen due to failure of internal control. Mm -hmm. Good attempts. Mm -hmm. Inherent risk, somebody has say inherent risk. Inherent risk is the risk happen to the nature of transaction. Yeah, this person has given yes, but but uh, due to the nature of what this the last part you have answered correct, but there is a part where uh, nature of transaction is an example of inherent risk, but not exact definition. Somebody say inherent risk is irrelevant to internal control. Yes. Uh -huh. Control risk is a risk, of course, not exact definition, but it is explaining that. Control risk is a risk happened due to the failure of internal control. Yes, it's para paraphrased, but uh, that's what it means. Inherent risk is caused by an error in financial statement done on purpose. Uh, of course, the, that, that one would be an example of inherent risk. So, uh, those definitions are kind of uh, standard definition given by by the by the standard first those are the combination of that all of them are called audit risk next time you may be asked to define what is an audit risk audit risk First, we need to understand what is an audit risk. Audit risk is a risk, is a risk that, it's a risk that auditors, auditors may give an inappropriate an inappropriate opinion, an inappropriate opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. Now, meaning, uh, in that case, auditor give incorrect opinion when financial statements are materially misstated, when they have, let's say, errors. Uh, let me see more comments. Inherent cost of... Huh? Yeah, I think I've seen all comments. Now, next you may be told to define audit risk. Those are simple, but those six marks can help you to pass the, to go beyond the mass pass mark or go be, below the pass mark. So you have to focus on those small definitions, which are very common. Now, uh, because in most cases, in most papers, you may not miss questions testing you on the risks. Then when you are looking at this, audit risk as components, those are the components now which are tested there. Next time the question could be, you, you could find it may, may be tested. What are the components of audit risk? 
So those are the components of audit, audit risks. Now, these components of audit risk, you have told me number one is inherent. Inherent risk. Now, somebody said inherent risk it is irrelevant of internal control system. That one is correct, but the ESA gives a definition like inherent risk uh, is the likelihood inherent risk is the likelihood is the likelihood that accounts accounts would be misstated would be misstated would be misstated uh -huh. due to somebody can say due to characteristics i'm trying to combine what you answered because somebody said because um, it's a misstatement due to the entities transactions which is which was also so correct due to the characteristics of of transactions or organization or organization as a whole before consideration of related controls. Yeah, somebody uh, gave that very clear. He said that inherent risk is the risk that financial statement could be misstated, irrelevant of internal controls. That was also correct. Then number two, is about uh, control risk. Yeah, that one, you got it correct. Control risk. That one, most of you got it correct. Is the risk that is the risk is the risk that an organizational controls and organizational controls, I mean organizational internal control system could fail to prevent, could fail to would you fail to detect events fail to prevent detect or correct material misstatements
So number three, detection risk. Yeah, detection risk is the risk that audit procedures is the risk that is the risk that audit procedures I hope you are seeing my commentary on that paper. Yeah. Um, I could not write it big because the paper is protected. It is in a PDF. So, but at least you are seeing those comments is the risk that the audit procedures fail to identify to identify material misstatements material misstatements now uh, that is what you are supposed to give to get these six marks two, two for each. Now, among this risk, auditor has control over one risk among the three. It's called detection risk. Why? Because you could be asked to give the reason why auditor has as control over over this risk one he has because of the sample size can determine the sample size procedures auditor can decide the number due to the sample size, the auditor can decide the procedures, the auditor can materiality. The kind of materiality which audit chooses would influence the detection risk. Yeah, so this is the only risk among the three that the auditor has control over. So uh, that's what we are supposed to answer. So and uh, I want you to further in your reading because the question can come in form of uh, in form of uh, a case study. So you have to know factors, examples where internal control risk may arise. Control risk may arise, detection risk may arise, and, uh, and inherent risk. Particularly, the examiner tend to focus on, uh, if you look at other papers, factors causing inherent risk. Once they are tested, I've seen it becomes a challenge to, to many candidates to answer it correct. So inherent risk, once it is tested, it has two levels. We have uh, two levels, two levels of assertions. We have financial statement level and we have account balance level whenever we are talking about financial level we talked about organization as a whole for example the the control environments of the clients may be weak for example uh, 
integrity, you, you look at whenever you are assessing the inherent risk at financial statement level, look at integrity, look at the culture of the organization, look at the qualification or competence, look at the industry, look at the competition. The competition can the competition can make financials to be the the competitors to overstate their financial statements to mistake their financial statements look at also uh the nature the nature of entity at transaction level inherent risk may be caused by volume of transaction uh competence of people uh, personnel involved in preparation estimates. So I'm giving that area of the risk because it is inherent risk is part which is more emphasized. Uh, let me look at question three. Question three, if you look at it, it's more uh, more direct. A question like this, you should not, uh, should not, this is the question that you, you do not miss to answer. Like here, state the respective responsibility of directors and management of company, and it is external auditor with respect to the financial statements. Now, this one, I expect you to two marks. Look at the two marks. Now, I want you to write one word, what or two words. The main word, what is the responsibility of directors? Can you write the main word you will be using to explain? responsibilities of directors or one sentence can somebody inbox responsibility of directors and management uh -huh. another person to write responsibility of auditors uh -huh. question and answer section I want to check. Somebody to write. Responsibilities of directors and auditors. In fact, that is the introduction of audit. Please, if you fail to give the two, it means uh, it means that you have not understood what audit is. Please, I'm waiting that because it's very important. Could somebody write? One word for responsibility of directors and one word responsibility of external auditors. I'm waiting you to type, please, because this is an interactive section. Yeah, somebody has indicated. Let me look at it. Uh 
Uh -huh. Implementing and maintaining internal controls, correct? Uh -huh. That is in relation to internal controls. Another one, another. So there are two parts, implementing and maintaining internal controls and uh, also preparation of books of accounts, which are free from errors. Implementing and maintaining internal controls to prevent all the strong internal controls that is able to detect and prevent fraud. So those are the two parts, preparation part, and you can talk about internal controls or procedures. Uh, whenever you are talking about auditors, uh, majorly it is examination of books of accounts, whether they comply to, whether they have been prepared according to ESAS. So it's about uh, examination, but directors is preparation. That one is your right. B, state three, limitation of audit evidence. That is under audit evidence. Uh -huh. um, could, could someone give me that? I want to see what you write there. I've seen more answers. So what are the three limitation of audit evidence? So a question like that, you would apply even general knowledge to answer that. Could you give me limitation? That is stating those questions are direct. Now I want to, I want, you to write three evidence, then I would give limitations limitation of audit evidence. So, uh, that is under the topic of audit evidence. Uh -huh. What are the limitations? You can guess that part. Now, uh, as we said, evidence, evidence you can think of uh, so many things. Eh? Uh, you can think of the, sometimes evidence could be costly. There's some evidence which could be costly to obtain. There could be also some evidence are not conclusive. They are persuasive, meaning 
some evidence like for provision they are based on estimates so in this case you would give based on your general some evidence could be even time consuming some evidence could need the work of an expert so this one you can use the general thinking to answer this one list four factors that may lessen sampling risk what is a sampling risk uh, a sampling risk usually you have to understand what is sampling you do sampling because let me check more a contribution okay you do sampling risk is a risk that a sample would give a different is a risk that a sample would not give the same result that a, a population would have given if the whole population were to be tested. So meaning you may test, let's say 15 invoice, you do tests, you conclude that the internal system is strong. But when you decide to check the whole population, the it will tell you that the whole population internal control is weak. So what the population give, the conclusion or the outcome of the sample is different from the outcome that the whole population would have given. So it is asking, the question is asking, how would you lessen the sampling risk? So in that case, once you understand what is a sampling risk, it would be easier for you to think of uh, to think of uh, this. Sampling risk is purely, you can lessen it by increasing. Number one, you can increase the sample. You can increase the sample size. Yeah, so long as you understand what the sampling risk. Then that one is testing you on uh, the issue of sampling. Then Uh, another thing you can do is we have what we call the tolerable error. Increase Yeah, sorry, decrease decrease tolerable error, meaning when you lower the tolerable error rates, it means you increase the sample size.
Then there is another factor what you'll do. Increase the number of sampling units. Increase the number of sampling units. So increase, there are so many things you can do as, as far as that one is concerned. You can, uh, increase what we call the audit procedures. Yeah, so so long as if you have understood what is the sampling risk, it will be easier for you to navigate and give the most relevant most relevant answers. So for sampling, you would have to, in your preparation, you have to go further and look at factors affecting the sample size, um, method you use in sampling. Then uh, also you need to, to know when does auditor does not need sampling. When can 100% tests can be effective? So those are the further areas you need to, to remind yourself before you go to exam. The state eight forms of audit evidence state eight forms. So a question like that, you can give forms of audit evidence. That's an open questions. Would somebody give me uh, forms of audit evidence? There are so many. Meaning, in that case, it is testing you. Audit procedures, you can, you can even use those audit procedures to obtain uh, evidence, the forms. That is given by ISA 500. There are so many. Uh, how audits obtain evidence? through the procedures which he may use to obtain audit evidence. There are those ones, inspection, through inspection of documents, observation, inquiry, and all those sort, so all of those ones. These ones are easier to give. What are the three advice you give to an auditor who suspect risk of material misstatements. Whenever you suspect the risk of misstatements, uh, this one is testing uh, still that ISA 315. Once auditor suspects, he has to, to do three things. Once, uh, carry out more substantive procedures.
more subs substantive substantive procedures maintain professional skepticism that's about judgment then number 3 it could be assess the impact the impact of risk of material misstatements the risk of material misstatements on the reports on his opinion so those are the possible advice here whenever I'm talking about uh, here uh, you suspect is being alert So question B, it's about uh, choosing. Now this question B, uh, it's testing internal controls. Now this question, it can appear to be easier, but if you use, uh, if you misinterpret it wrongly, you would answer it as I normally emphasize this. You should differentiate between control control procedures, control control procedures, passes, substantive. substantive substantive procedures so controls are designed to substantive control procedures are designed to realize the objective of ICS for example to safeguard errors and fraud to ensure they are operational. Those are on the, those are the features of components of internal control systems. They tend to realize the objective of a data entity, but substantive procedures, they tend to test accuracy, So those are the keywords that you should not confuse because if I change here, I write substantive procedures over sales, stock, purchase, the answer would be different. Now, procedures, make sure they sound like procedures. The, the controls. 
and uh, what are the, the words that you should use when you are writing maybe controlled procedures? Usually, if you see most questions out there are framed, the control procedures are established by management, but substantive procedures are done by auditor. So for us, we are evaluating whether the control procedures established by management are adequate. Controls, for example, over sales, stock, purchase, payroll, cash receipts, and here. So for example, if you are asked sales and purchases, you have to understand the, the cycle. First, understand sales cycle and purchase cycle. Then it will be easier for you to answer those questions. For example, if I understand the sales cycle, for example, I would be able to come up with control. For example, in sales, when I'm answering that question, sales and purchases, in sales, there is major cycles when you are answering that. First cycle you look at, for example, if it's sales, I'm giving it the hint of answering that. If you are looking at sales, there is a part of ordering. Orders. You receive orders from customers. So in that case, it should have its own controls. Uh, another thing, it should we have a section of, uh, let's say, okay, for example, if I'm talking about ordering, which are the controls organization should have to ensure that there is, a, there is errors are minimized, transactions are recorded, so, I would think of, uh, for example, if I'm talking about uh, sales, there is ordering and uh, I would say there is a ordering part and credit approval, like that one you saw in the in the case study. That is the first part when you are talking about sell, meaning goods, goods and services are only supplied to customer with good credit ratings with a certain limit. You should put a limit that you give customers. Then, uh, another controls, they should be like at uh, at that a at that there should be authorization of credit limits at that point at ordering and credit. Cre uh, there is. Segregation of duties whenever, because sales and purchases are common, common areas that you would find them every paper because they are very critical. Uh, this is the first part you look at when you are doing ordering and credit part that 
there should be a person who is doing credit control, invoicing and inventory should be different. There should be authorization of credit terms to customers. That's another part under ordering and credit. Sequential numbering of orders. Orders should be sequentially numbered. Matching of customer order with production orders or dispatch notes. Now, once goods are dispatched, they should be matched with orders. Now, after you have finished ordering and credit, the, if you have seen my answering in control, um, using the word should, mostly in my answering, should to ensure that those are controls, not tests, those are controls. Then, when you are talking about sales, you should talk about dispatch section, dispatch of goods. What are the controls you do at the dispatch? Because this has ordering as dispatch and as a part of accounting, accounting and recording. So when you are answering those, you should split your points. You should point that sales as these three parts. When dispatch is done, I think most of us, we deal with the goods or we deal with the services or goods. Before dispatch is done, they should also authorization the person who is doing the segregation, segregation could happen in every level. The person who is doing dispatch should be separate. Uh, the, the, uh, the store should be different from the person who approved the orders. Uh, Pre-numbering of dispatch notes, that's the example. Uh, Inventory record, recorded, records is updated. There are so many controls you can put at that dispatch point. Dispatch that is when goods are out of the store. Uh, examination of good outwards, quantity, quality, and conditions. Recording of goods outwards on good dispatch notes, like that, prenumbering of dispatch notes, condition of returns reviewed, there are goods which are which can be returned by customers. So at accounting, we have also a phase in cell code accounting and recording. Also, segregation is required at that point. Even if we write that point, that's a different. Mark. So, in that case, uh, segregation of duties, recording of sales invoice in sequence, uh, cut off procedures. You should ensure there are cut off procedures. Whenever I'm talking about uh, cut off procedures, uh, is to ensure that invoice are dealt or are recorded in the correct period. Uh, regular preparation of statements, a review of receivable statements to ensure that they have been properly, they have been prepared correctly. Authorization of writing off bad debts at that stage. Now that is sales. Purchases also, it, it has its own cycle. If somebody has purchases, 
I'm just focusing on those sales and purchases because you can be given even, uh, even you have seen in the case studies, we had part of uh, sales, we had the case that internal controls were focusing on sales and purchases and inventory. So in purchases, also we have the, the cycle. You have to understand the purchase cycle. Before you buy goods, what happens? The usually you have to understand the whole process of buying. Before an organization, a, a company buys goods, the user departments must request requisition. You have to talk about requisition. Requisition, approval. The, the user departments should raise a requisition and the purchase should be approved. And then goods received, receipts of goods. You should talk about what are the procedures over receipts of goods. Yeah, for example, uh, goods received should be reconciled with goods ordered. Yeah. Then a uh, goods received note should be raised. We talk about goods received note. Then you talk about goods inspection inspection of goods segregation segregation of duties especially when that one is involved this is the the inventory Uh, maybe if we are talking about now stock, stock also, you need to know the, what are the problem in stock? What are the areas that needs control in uh, inventory, the risk areas? that needs control. One, when you are answering the question on stock, inventory. Okay, inventory as a challenge because of uh, because it is like we saw in that case study, it's prone to theft. And another challenge of inventory is valuation. Another challenge of inventory is cut off. So you need to, to come up controls that will address such issues. So uh, whenever you are just talking about, uh, you are coming up with the inventory, talk about split the controls, think of the controls. I'm just giving you the approach, how you would, focus when you are answering that question, focus on controls that would enable you that to ensure that, that inventory is recorded. For example, 
is correctly recorded. Like maintenance of inventory records. You talk about recording. Recording of inventory. Inventory is one issue which is very uh, which is very sensitive and which is very technical if not handled well. Like recording, talk about inventory ledgers, inventory ledgers, or bin cards. Okay, then talk about uh, talk about cut off. Talk about cut off procedures. For example, in cut off procedure, I may say that the consideration of inventory counts to books records and control accounts. Uh, all dispatch documents processed daily to record the dispatch of finished goods. Then talk about, that is about reconciliation so that the, the stock of another of this period is not recorded next year. Then another issue is to address slow moving goods, slow moving goods. Another aspect is level of inventory, controls over level of inventory. For example, coming <clears throat> those one we did in the management accounting, like maximum inventory, the, the order quantity. Those are the order quantity, those are controls the order quantity, the order levels, uh, maximum limits, minimum limits. Those are the ones uh, somebody would come under the, the these controls. You can look at more controls, but the most important is to understand the area. If it's payroll, payroll, no, it is controls. Uh, beside this, look at also substantive tests on these items because substantive test is now how to get evidence on sales, whether the sales balance are, because I told you substantive test, this test on accuracy and they are done by auditor. That is by using those techniques we said, reconcile, recompute, you agree. For example, if in sales, I will agree the sales order with the sales invoice. That is a substantive procedure. So we normally use the word agree, reconcile, uh, recalculate, that's when you are uh, uh, answering the question on uh, substantive. So don't con confuse substantive procedures and internal control procedures. Uh, question five. Yeah, this is now uh, the question I wanted. If you look at four and question five, the Question four and five, they are different. The question four in, in terms of framing. And the purpose of that question is to test you whether you know how to differentiate substantive procedures and control procedures. 
This one, audit procedure are substantive. Substantive tests. The, the purpose here is to test accuracy, accuracy, completeness, completeness, and validity. Validity of the transaction. Now here the words use matters a lot. So mark of the word you use, the word we use, don't use the word uh, see, instead use observe. Observe, inspect, reconcile. Now, for when you are doing audit procedures on fixed assets, uh, I normally use this acronym to, to, to test these assertions. I normally use CAVEPO. If I'm stuck answering these tests, for example, tangible fixed assets, the cover pop here, I will check whether I will see meaning costs. Usually, an, how is the, was the asset test, uh, I will check how the, the fixed asset is measured, whether it's measured at costs, measurements. That's about measurements. I will talk about authorization. A in my, yeah, check whether the purchase was authorized, if it's fixed tangible assets. I will check V means valuation. Is the asset correctly valued? I will talk about beneficial. Who is benefiting from the assets? Is the asset being used by an entity? Beneficial ownership. Basically, that's uh, all ownership and beneficial. They are very, uh, E means, I've skipped E. E means existence. Very important. You should check existence. Now, whenever you are looking at authorization, we usually check at board, board minutes. You check whether there is approval, uh, approval in the board minutes. Existence here, you'll do the fiscal inspection. Do fiscal inspection. Do fiscal inspection. Beneficial ownership, that one, you'll know, you'll check even the uh, the assets register. Then there is part which is called valuation, a present presentation. Yeah, presentation and disclosure. Is the assets presented or disclosed according to? You have to know the standard. The standard on tangible assets is IAS 16. So those are the audit procedure you need to carry on fixed assets. Uh, you will use this, the,
you'll use that curve pop initials to remind yourself. Then we have account receivables and uh, prepayments. Uh, this account receivables, usually the major test to confirm uh, because there are more, the, the first you use confirmation. Confirmation are secularization. Data's confirmation to check their existence. Then, uh, you also check valuation in terms of if bad debts written off, bad debts approval. Mm -hmm. You may reconcile. There are things, many things you do here on bad debts up. Confirmation, bad debts, the the, the the confirmation is the main issue here to come about existence. Now, also when you are talking about account receivable, you should also talk about uh, um, the check bad debts have been approved, confirmation, you check with the statements. Uh, also, there is that part of prepayments. Prepayments, we know these are cash paid in advance. You have to check that they have been properly recorded. So sometimes they can be under expense. Bank and cash balance also check it is controls. Bank should have bank reconciliation. Uh, check on controls over signatories. Um, you can also do securitization. You can send letters to the bank to confirm the balances. Uh, you should also talk about petty cash system that petty cash to ensure that uh, you can talk about also cash count for cash balances. Account payable, you account payable here, you can the supplier statements with the ledger, you can agree. Then provision and liabilities, you check whether they conform to IAS 37, that is condition for recognition, whether they are recognized or disclosed as per IAS 37. Um, share capital, talk about whether there is issue of capital, check whether there is issue of capital, whether there was approval of issue of share capital. Um, if there is movement of share capital, meaning there was issue, you check you check so many, when we are talking about share capital, talk about uh, whether there was a premium, premium was correctly recorded. Yeah, like that. Um, check on uh, number of shares versus those who unpaid dividends. So in this audit procedures, have understanding of the, the face of, this is accounting. We are auditing 
the books which we understand very well. So here, those are the major tests that you look at. Now in question six, um, question six is somehow what we have just looked at, but remember in this part B, you have choose the questions that you think you will score more marks. Like here, uh, those three questions you choose, ensure that you choose a question that you would be able to get good marks. State the objective of an independent external auditor for the financial statements. So the keyword objective of independent auditor, we have just to express an opinion, that one we have just mentioned it. Uh, what are the responsibilities does the auditor have for an information on the website that may be linked to electronic fashions of the company's annual statements and auditors reports? How does the responsibility in P differ from auditors' responsibility for other information in the company's annual reports that includes the financial statements and auditor's reports. Explain N12 basic elements of auditor's reports. Now, in this part B, uh, do not answer the question unless you see the, the distribution of the marks, because you may answer, you may think that part A is easier. You find that you are losing, let's say, 12 marks if you don't understand the 12 marks. Uh, basically, uh, about reporting. Yeah, this one, I want to, uh, because well, we are about finishing, we have to emphasize on also reporting. The, the reporting part, we have, at the beginning, we have just looked at uh, major parts. We have just looked at uh, uh, maybe responsibility. We have just mentioned planning, planning phase. We have talked about internal controls. We have also looked at question of substantive tests, control procedures substantive tests. We have somehow looked at uh, audit evidence uh, and part of sampling. Uh, but we haven't talked more on audit reports. When we are talking about audit reports, uh, we have to focus on uh, parts of audit reports, parts of audit reports. Parts of audit reports. So uh, there is, that is ISA 700 from We have the reporting start from ISA 700. They say ISA 700. I've, I've told you that there are some ISAs that are very specific. We have mentioned, apart from this ISA 700, there is seven ISA 700, ISA 705. Those are about reporting. Maybe let me talk about that ISA before I talk about other that you are going to do self-reading. Uh, about reports, we have said you can give, if you do not have any reservation, 
can give unqualified reports. And then we said you can give qualified reports. So qualified report has as uh, as it is or opinion types different types of opinion now depending on the nature of the matter here if you have material and not pervasive not pervasive there are also matters which you find it is material and pervasive. Those are the nature of the matter. Nature of the matter, because you can be told to explain the, or sometimes to decide which kind of opinion you can give qualified opinion. Uh, this is nature of the matter. Then the basis, basis of qualification. Usually when we are giving a qualification, there are two bases. You can have a uh, a basis of limitation. Limitation of scope. This part of uh, limitation of scope. There's also part of disagreements. Those are the, the, the major points that uh, they take away home. So that when you are answering, they can help you even when you are given a scenario, you are recommending the type of qualified opinion you would give. Now, a limitation of scope is when you do not get evidence. Maybe you asked management to give, e.g. management representation. You requested for management representation. You did not get it. Uh, no inventory. You did not. There was inventory counts. No inventory counts. You did not, not attending not attending, not attending inventory counts, such case. Now, disagreements, it could be application, application of, uh, application or misapplication of accounting policies, misapplication of accounting policies. Is application of accounting, accounting policies. Yeah, those are the scenarios which may cause. In this case, if mater material we know what it means, if an omission or misstatements could uh, influence, if it will were omitted, it could affect the users. Pervasive, it means, does it affect financial statement as a whole? So in this case, you would give, if, the, if there is a limitation of scope and the nature of the matter, and the nature of the matter, 
and the nature of the matter is material and persuasive, you give um, subject subject to opinion. This one you would give disclaimer. Disclaimer opinion. This one, if there is disagreement, anything of disagreement, let's say they changed from. Okay, we have kind of this creative accounting whereby the client may change from using. We know that IAS 8 recommends that accounting policy, they, they should IAS 1 and IAS 8, they emphasize on the consistency. If there is change in accounting policy, it should be justified. Now, if you find that there is a disagreement, for example, the clients changed from reducing balance to maybe a straight line method and you dis the matter is and the balances are material but not overall they are material to a certain class of transaction that one you will give except for except you give except for except for opinion give except for opinion now this is the the extreme point of a qualification whereby there is a disagreement and this disagreement is material and pervasive in this case we'll give what we call adverse give adverse give adverse we give adverse opinion now the this part they usually confuse when the it comes to the report and also uh, parts of the report we have responsibility paragraph you should be able to responsibility. This one you have just mentioned. Responsibility paragraph. Those ones should clearly uh, separate the responsibility of auditor and the responsibility of management. Then another. Another part in audit reports that you have, it's uh, this one we know it is a basis, basis of opinion, opinion paragraph. Then we'll have what we call opinion paragraph. There is emphasis of matter paragraph. Emphasis of matter paragraph. Other matter paragraph. Yeah, those are the emphasis of the ESA. 
then we have key audit matter paragraph key key audit matter paragraph so uh the report also has you have to uh, going concern you have also the going concern should be uh, according to isa revised the going concern should be a separate paragraph it should not be included in other now how do you use this paragraph so the especially these three paragraphs have their, their functions. Emphasis of matter paragraph. If there is any matter, those are the areas which confuse most. If there is matter, matter, any matter of uh, matters in the financial statements, the matter that uh, auditor would uh, would like to bring would like to bring to matter. In reference, in reference to financial in reference to financial statements that auditor would like to bring to attention of users uh, yeah this one it would bring it in the other matters paragraph but if the for example if is uh, referring to let's say provision eg provision let's say the provision he has to refer like refer to notes let's say a note note number seven provi provision you want to give more explanation about provisions what are these provision amounting to let's say of seven million belongs to what maybe you would explain uh reference in reference to note number seven the amounts relate is uh, the amount uh, is in regard to a customer, a customer who sued the company, and we are yet to uh, we have recognized this this amount because the court gave the ruling or the court gave the verdict. So if the matter does not concern the financial statements, let's say change in laws, let's say REMA has changed the laws that are the affecting the farm. So let's matters, these are matters, that do not do not refer to financial statements. If the matters do not refer to financial statement, e.g., e changes in tax law. Uh, 
like for example RRA change the they came up with the new laws and whatever so if they do not affect a certain note in the financial statement but general you have to bring it through other matters paragraph now isa 705 okay this matter called come e audit matters these are matters matters according to auditors judgments that were significant yeah when we say matters that were this is kind of auditor according to auditors judgments this is based on auditors judgments yeah what were the matters what that were significant during the audit whenever you are talking about significant it's like those one which caused challenge in maybe correcting the evidence that were material and those that auditor needs to communicate to those who are charged with the governors. So, uh, basically, a example of those key audit matters, it could be areas that were challenging to the auditor. For example, let me give you example. It can be, let's say, if auditor was testing, let's say, financial instruments, Financial instruments, for example, we use IFRS 9. Financial instruments. And this area may need some maybe experts that maybe it was using financial instruments that were complex maybe applying the, the recognition and the measurements was a challenge to auditor, it would bring that matter to the, to the attention of the users. If there is revaluation, those are the, those are the example of matters that may revaluation of assets. If they post a challenge, the auditor may bring it in under key audit matters. If we have, let's say, revenue recognition challenge, the auditor had to, it was challenging, but the model used by the firm, if it was leasing provisions, like that. So basically, Basically, this is uh, in summary, this is what you need to understand about uh, audit reports.
about qualified and and qualified when you don't you do not have reservations uh basis of qualifications this one how do you give the four types of qualification and parts of auditors reports basis usually the basis we use are uh, basis we base on the ESAS, the national standards, and particularly the last part, I would like to talk about this ESAS, which are the ESAS that you need to specifically focus because Whenever we are talking about this ESAS, there are those ones which the examiner need you to give exact content in that ESA. So, uh, go and look at uh, the list of ESAS, but uh, mostly, Mostly, it is ESA. I want to check. Yeah, the ESA that you are supposed to know the exact contents is <clears throat> is uh, that are more confusing. You are supposed to know. Um, ESA 315, the one we said, revised. This one we have looked at it. When the question is tested, the, the, the content, the content comes, the content or the way you are supposed to answer that, it is the points come from the ESA. Like here, we said why, why you do, why you need to understand the clients, how, and what. Then, uh, another ESA that you need to understand that need exact information is ESA 330. That one you are asked the question there, what would you advise? It's the title of that, the auditor response. Auditors auditors response to assessed risk. That one was uh, the, the, there's a, a question we did that how would you advise the auditor if there is suspected material misstatement or suspected uh, yeah when there is suspected risk in the financial statements so in that case that is isa 330 another isa you have to check is um yeah then uh, ESA 520, ESA 5, you have to check ESA 520, ESA 520, 
Those are having specific answers whenever they are tested. 520 analytical procedures. They have Those are the ones which are very challenging when you are answering the, the questions, which are a bit, a bit challenging when you are answering the questions. Then another ISA, uh, read about ISA. Uh, read about ISA 700 to, we have ISA 700, those are on the report. 700, 71, 76. 700 up to 76. And then the other ISA is called 720, the last one, called other information. These are about reporting issues. This is the one we have said, audit opinion. Talk about audit opinion. Talk about modification. Modification of audit opinion, emphasis of matter. Emphasis of matter. Talk about, yeah, emphasis of matter paragraph. And also, ISA 720, talk about other information. That's what the last question was asking. Now, this other information, it is. What do we mean by other information? Other information is in the annual reports of a company, there are other reports accompanying that are different from audit reports. The company gives annual reports, but also it, uh, audit reports would be included. So other information, it could be like uh, directors, the directors reports, audit committees reports, and those are called other information, other than what? Other than auditors reports. What we look at, we tend to look at whether this information is consistent, is consistent, with auditors reports. So uh, before auditor gives the opinion, he will check whether there is consistency. If let's say the company is talking about sales, uh, is talking about sales in auditors reports, then there it should be, yeah, it should be same. Let's say if auditor is reporting 800 million, directors are reporting, let's say 900 million. In that Monica, case, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So I don't want to interrupt you, but I think you can try to cross session as there will be another session is Sunday. Okay. And of course, most of the attendees could probably have work tomorrow. So I think oh, okay, it would not okay. be ethical to continue beyond of this time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can try to see how you can conclude. 
today. Yes. And meet and meet uh, Sunday. There is another session Sunday. Okay, fine. So, um, basically, uh, what we have said, the auditor looks at uh, other information, not, not to so that they can be same. So pay attention to these ISAs because they would uh, help you to answer uh, your questions relevantly. So thank you very much for your time and patience. Yeah, we'll continue from there in the next session. Have good night. Thank you, Obonyo, for this presentation. And thank you for those who managed to join. So let's have and let's break for here. See you Sunday uh, from 1 p.m. Okay, thank so you very much. You're most welcome and have a good night. Okay, thank you. Those, those who are asking videos, we will share them at the link so that they can probably visit the link and read. We will share the link. Okay.